According to the Reader's Digest, our physicians are ailing. They are burned out, they're fed up, they're battered by spreadsheets. And my question is, why aren't financial advisors going through the same angst? When we look at what it takes to become a physician, you might have to be in school for 10 years. Look at being a nurse, nurse practitioner, how long it takes to go through that education, or a PA, physician's assistant, or any type of medical professional. What is happening here, as they're talking about, is that the industry, the hospitals, the private equity firms are telling doctors what they can and what they can't do, and they're frustrated. They want to help people, they want to make people better, but they're often being told to do things that are just really good for the bottom line of the hospitals and the medical institutions that they work for. So they're angry, I think, because they're so well-educated and they know what the problem is. If we look at the financial field, so many times people go to work for investment industry firms, insurance companies, mutual fund companies, broker dealers, investment operators, and they don't even know what the problem is because of the low level of education that is required of them. In fact, one of the guys in here was telling me about this firm that hired somebody, they brought them on board to run an office with just a Series 7 and a Series 65. Now, you may not know what that is, but I can tell you, I got the Series 7 in my first year of doing this, and it only took a few weeks to study for it and pass the test. That is not enough, in my humble opinion. You have to go way deeper, but often what happens is you go to work for these firms and you just sell the products that they want you to sell, and you don't look into it that deeply. You don't really research it. And it is the end investor that suffers. When we look at the fine print, quite often in the fine print of the investment, there are all kinds of problems, but they don't even know to look for these things or what to look for. I think that the public needs to be asking more of the financial advisors. And the advisors need to be actually going through more in-depth training than they are, than they're required to. I think that's the reason there's a big difference between the level of anxiety in the medical industry and the level of anxiety in the financial industry. The investor isn't being served well, in my humble opinion.